Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Word on a Wednesday. Super excited to be here with each and every one of you and excited about being back in 2024. It is time for Bible study. We are off of our winter hiatus after the holidays and super excited to get into our new series on tonight called Harvest Time. If this is your first time joining us in 2024, let me give you a couple of ground rules when it comes to Word on a Wednesday. All you need is an open heart, a ready mind, your Bible, and something to take notes with. And we're going to go on a journey through the scriptures. Now, this is not your usual Bible study. We're not going to be preaching at you, but we're going to be interacting with you and digging into the scriptures on today. So as always, what we're going to do is start with a quick intro to give you time after you've got all the things that you need for Bible study to go ahead and share this, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Facebook with a friend and tell them that word on a Wednesday is back in 2024 and we're stronger than ever. And then you can also say hello in the chat. All right. See you in about 45 seconds after this countdown. Hold you. Hey everybody, welcome back to Word on a Wednesday. We are super pumped to be back with you. If you have not been with us before, we are super excited to have you, y'all. It has been too, too long. We finished our Road to Romans series back in December, and we are back with a fresh, 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 fresh new series called Harvest Time. Now, I'm so excited that I get to go on this journey for Bible study, not alone, but with everyone with that I'm here with. We've got an awesome group of hosts that are with me. We've got uh, Tavia Wiggins as well. And then we've also got Pastor Chris that we're going to invite up. But we want you to invite a friend to this party as well. If they are not on here, go ahead and let them know that Word on a Wednesday is is back, okay? Is back. Go ahead and share that with a friend. Um, before we get into bringing our host up, I want to make sure that you put who you are in the comments. We would love to um, say hello to you. We want to make sure that you're there, make sure that you're tuned in with us. And again, you can share this with a friend. Um, so without further ado, I want to bring up our esteemed host. He is the dominant male force in this trio on Word on a Wednesday. He's your favorite uncle. He's the deacon and the pastor that you need in your not life. He is not even Bishop Secular. He is Bishop Church Church and more church. I want to invite to the stage Pastor Christopher Jones. Hi, Pastor Chris. How are you? We give honor to God just for being here for being alive, being well, being saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire. We thank God for all that he does and all that he's doing to us, through us, and in us in this season, and we're just excited, and and, and I feel more churchy uh, this week because uh, the leadership of the Church of God in Christ is in town having their leadership conference, and I feel the unctioning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I'm just excited to be here. And uh, how are you doing? I'm so glad to be back. We've been we've been away. We've, we've been, been away. away. But we've been spending time with God. For those of you um, that know us and Word on a Wednesday, one of the things that I love about our hosts and um, is that all of us have varying backgrounds. I grew up in the Baptist, United Methodist, AME environment. Then I got submerged into a uh, Pentecostal <laughs> context through a Bible Way church. 
Pastor Chris has a Baptist and cogent background and Pastor Tavia, who's usually with us, but she's on sabbatical right now, working on an assignment for the Lord. She comes from an apostolic background as well. And I believe all of that gives us a rounded perspective and how we approach the things of the kingdom, how we approach the, the word of God. And all of us are ministers in our own right. Pastor Tavia is a seminarian. I am just an avid student of the word. Pastor Chris is a pastor. And so again, we're really excited, but we're excited that we have all of you with us as well. Now, I want you to prepare your hearts and minds. It's just the two of us on tonight. We can make it if we, <laughs> y'all, we like to have fun over here. <laughs> Two of us, but it's going to be power packed. But let's the Bible say, says we're two or three, huh? huh? We're two yeah. or three, huh? <laughs> we're in the book even now. It's 2024, it's January. We got a few first time visitors. Let's not scare them just yet, Pastor. <laughs> we'll ramp up in a minute. But we want to say hello to some of you. Good evening, Teresa. Hey, girl, how are you? We want to say hello to Shirley, who's faithful. Hello, Pastor Darlene. Good evening. Y'all, my auntie is on here. Hey, Aunt Weez. Hello, hello. We've got Lady Gail in here. Let me tell you, she is the hostess with the most. <laughs> hello. Um, she keeps us on track, y'all. Hello, Sandra. Hello. Hey, Ma, happy to have you in here. Shirley Wilson's in here. We got Wilson. So, listen, she's going to make sure we keep it on the word because she's going to be like, uh -uh. Listen, listen. what does the word say? What, so, what does the word say? What does the word say? <laughs> and if you want to yell out, tell the truth. She's the only person I know who, in the middle of the sermon, will yell to the pastor, tell the truth. So I. <laughs> <laughs> it's tight, but it's right. Okay. Listen. We've also got Ms. Walker in here. Good evening. Good evening. If you've not shared this, whether you're on Facebook or whether you are on a YouTube, please go ahead and share this with a friend. Well, let's jump right into Bible study on tonight. Um, we're talking from the topic of harvest time. That is our new series. And we like lots of interaction. So whether you're on YouTube or Facebook, we're going to constantly say, put it in the chat. But our topic on tonight is harvest time. And the reason why we wanted to talk about it is when Pastor um, Tavia, Pastor Chris and I got together, the Lord really pressed on our heart for 2024. It's a time of harvest. And when you all hear of harvest time, the first thing that we like to do in a church context is go up in a shout. We're excited about harvest. Yes, I'm going to get all that God has for me. And that's important. But we believe in being educated students of the word. Unless you know what all is incorporated into harvest, you might be going through the harvest time or harvest process and not call it harvest because you didn't realize what came along with harvest. And so what we want to do is educate you biblically on tonight and over the next several weeks of kind of the components of harvest. Now, tonight we're going to talk about harvest in general. Next week, we're going to talk about wheat versus weeds. The Bible says the wheat versus the tear. But next week, we'll talk about wheat versus weeds. We're also going to talk about what does it look like to be on the threshing floor? Because in order to get a harvest, you've got to go through a process. Come on. In order to get a harvest, you got to go through a process. And so we're going to explore that all biblically. But tonight, we're going to talk about the harvest in general. So I hope you've got something to take some good notes with. We've got plenty of notes for you, plenty of word. And again, if you've got questions, this is not your typical Bible study. Throw them in the comment section, whether it's on YouTube or whether it's on Facebook Live, and we will try to answer those questions for you, okay? So let's start off with an overview of what is harvest. When you look at the word harvest in the Greek, there's a word called theresmos, all right? three smokes, okay? That is the word for harvest. In the Hebrew, that word is katsir. Again, in the Hebrew, the word is katsir. And when you talk about harvest, the reason why we want to break down the root and what these words mean is particularly the word katsir. We're going to talk about that because it's a little more deeper than what the Greek is. The Greek word three smokes means the act of reaping. So what did I say just a few minutes ago? You're excited about harvest, but harvest 
is an act of reaping. And if you don't understand what the process is to reap, you may mismanage or mislabel the moment of harvest because it happens to be a little bit hard. I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to make sure that you all are with me. The word katsir in the Hebrew literally means to sever. So if you've been starting 2024, said, I believe it's a year that God's going to do something great for me and things are being cut or you're feeling like it's hard. You really are in harvest. I've got good news for you that the word kasir in the Hebrew that stands for harvest means severed. It means to come apart. OK, it and that refers to harvest reaping. It refers to the crop, the time and the reapers. Okay. I'm going to say that again. That word kasir in the Hebrew, when they say to sever, to gather, it means to reap. It refers to the crop, the time and the reaper. And that's what we're going to talk about on tonight, how all of those things are interconnected. So if you're with me, I'm going to throw something on the screen, but I want you to settle this in your spirit. Your harvest is connected to what you sow, the environment, the time, I'm about to run already, and the quality of your reapers. I'm going to say that again. Your harvest is connected to what you sow, the environment, the time, and the quality of your reapers. Now, full disclosure, y'all, me and Pastor Chris has been spending some consecrated time with the Lord, so it's going to get oily real quick. So I, I just want you to ride with us and go because we're going somewhere in God and we're excited about it. Your harvest is connected to what you sow, the environment, the time, and the quality of the reapers. And we're going to break down all four of those components of harvest in just a moment. But let's start with some scripture because we are in Bible study and you can't have Bible study without scripture. We're going to start in Matthew, the 13th chapter the 24th through the 30th verse, okay? Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30. And we want to break this down. And I'm going to tell you all uh, why this is also important. I want to make sure you're not hoodwinked, bamboozled, or preyed upon in this new age Western context of people telling you about a harvest and they're not telling you what it is biblically, but they're uh, preying on your emotions to get you to do something that is not tied to scripture. We're going to break down that too. And those of you that cover word on a Wednesday, pray for us because again, when we teach, we're coming up against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness because the, the one thing the enemy doesn't want you to get is to be free. And the Bible says that the truth shall set you free. And as we're giving the truth, you're going to come out of grips with the lies that are trying to bind your mind. The, any, the Lord could have said anything would make you free, but the truth is going to do it. And teaching biblically makes you free. So you all keep us in prayer. So Matthew, the 13th chapter, verses 24 through 30, I'm actually asked Pastor Chris to read it if he doesn't mind because he's such a good reader. You want to read that for us, Pastor Chris? Absolutely. I love reading the word of God. I love reading the word of God. This is coming from the New Living Translation, Matthew chapter 13, verse starting at verse 24. How far you want us to go now? 30. All right. All right. Matthew chapter 13, beginning at verse number 24. This is what the word of the Lord says in the New Living Translation. Here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted a good seed in his field. Verse 25, verse 25. But that night as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat, then slipped away. When the crop began to grow and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmers went to him and said, Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this, the farmer exclaimed. Should we pull the weeds? They asked. No, he replied. You'll uproot the wheat if you do. Let both grow together until the harvest. Then I will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds, tie them in bundles, and burn them 
and to put the wheat in the barn. It's Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30. So when we read that parable of the wheat and the tear, some versions say the wheat and the weeds, depending on what Bible you're looking at. There's a couple of things that we just talked about that are pointed out. There was something that was sown. We're going to start there. So the first thing that you should know, your harvest is connected to what you sow. Now, I want to give context because a lot of um, new age churches will say, put something in the ground <clears throat> and then that'll be their way of queuing you up to go into your purse or your and wallet give an and, and give an offering. And you can feel the emotional shift. But I want to tell you, it's deeper than that. Now, I'm not here to knock giving because I've been in movements of God or moments with God. And the Lord specifically has told me, I've heard his audible voice. I want you to give that. But I want you to know your harvest is connected to what you sow. But what you sow is not just about finances. I want to hear you. Hear you. Sowing is not a financial thing. Sowing is a kingdom thing. And what you sow can look like a variety of things. In the same way that when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or to a farmer's market, and there's several different things of vegetation, that's because the seeds that were sown for the vegetation were all different things. And there is something connected to what you sow. And the reason why that's important, because in the concept of sowing and reaping, the Bible talks about this specifically. So we're going to flip on over to Galatians, the sixth chapter. Hopefully I'm not taking y'all too fast. We're going somewhere, so stick with us. When you go to Galatians, the sixth chapter, the seventh through the tenth verse, it's going to say this, and this is important. I'm reading from the Christian Standard Bible because I want to give it to you plainly this way. It says, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the spirit will reap eternal life from the spirit. Verse 9, let us not get tired of doing good for we will what? Reap at the proper time. Come on, we'll go back to that element of time in a minute. If we don't give up, verse 10, therefore, as we have opportunity let us work for the good of all, especially for those who belong to the household of faith. So I want to pause there. Here's the first point. If your harvest is connected to what you sow, you cannot plant one seed and think you're going to get a different harvest. Now, I know they told you if you sow $20, God is going to give you three houses. That's not what that's not how it works. OK, I, I appreciate that's a miracle if the Lord does it. But what you specifically sow, you're going to reap exactly what you sow. So I'll give it to you this way. I'll go beyond money. You can't sow gossip and think you're going to reap a good reputation and a good name amongst other people. Proverbs speak to that. You cannot reap lack of, you can't sow, excuse me, a lack of discipline concerning your eating and think God is going to give you a harvest of pure health. It doesn't work that way. You cannot sow discord amongst the brethren with your family members and think that you're going to reap a good reputation or salvation for your family members through your hands. It does not work that way. Your harvest is connected to what you sow. So I want you to soberly think about when someone says it's harvest time, that should take you to a shout, yes. But before you go into a shout, you need to sit and walk circumspectly in your spirit to ask the Lord, what have I sown if it's harvest time? And some of us think that the devil is on our trail and it has nothing to do with the devil. It is because we sowed something in one season that we forgot about whether good or bad and it's now germinating and growing and we're acting surprised. And the enemy is like, I didn't even do that. No, you did that. You so come on. If if someone sees a woman's womb, when she gets to the doctor and she happens to be pregnant, she shouldn't be looking confused about, well, I don't know 
where the baby came from. There was an act that was engaged in. Something was sown, something was planted. And so a lot of us, as we think about harvest, as we're going into this season, we need to really ask the Lord first, open my eyes, God, to what I've planted, good or bad, that might try to rear its head in this season. And if it's good things, I'm rejoicing for what you're about to do. But if what you're about to do, but if it's something that's inappropriate that I've sown, God, I repent. And here's the thing about repentance. Repenting is not just for God. The Lord will tell you to go make it right with the individual. I know y'all don't want to hear this tonight. It's tight, but it's right. You cannot just go in private and get it right with God and never make an attempt if you made an open show of doing something wrong and think that that's okay. You sold something and you have the opportunity to dig it back up from the ground. Come on. Somebody put in the comments, dig it back up. Dig it back up. What did you sow? And for those of you that have sowed good seed, I'm here to encourage you in the Holy Ghost. God remembers what you sowed in secret. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. God remembers what you sow in secret. I'm going to say these two last things and I'm going to let Pastor Chris jump in. Somebody say, Yolanda, well, I don't believe that. No, I can sow a car and get $5 million. I'm, I'm going to give you proof of that. The Bible, when we study the Bible from a hermeneutical perspective, there's a law of first mention. And so we use Bible to interpret Bible. The principle of sowing was established by God in Genesis 1 and 11. And here's what I need to tell you in Christendom. Sometimes we wonder why the wicked that don't profess God are prospering the way that they are in the natural is because they've picked up concepts that have been embedded into the earth, irrespective of the God that they serve. And some of the things that happen in creation are not just for the believer. Woo, hear me. The principles that are in creation is not restricted to the believer. He gave these to mankind. And so I want you to hear this so that you can establish yourself in the earth. This is why somebody who lie, cheats, and steals can go out and be disciplined in their credit and get six houses. It's not that the devil is blessing them. They've learned the principle of sowing discipline with their credit and their behaviors. And those houses are the reward of them being good stewards. I want y'all to see how this is connected. Everything is about not about some kind, some kinds go by fasting and praying, but a lot more come by discipline. Now you, you can quote me on that. A, a lot go, some go by fasting and praying, but a lot go by discipline, okay? The principle of sowing is established in Genesis 1 and 11. I want to read that over you really quick. Genesis 1 and 11. We're going to do these last two scriptures, and then I want Pastor Chris to jump in on this concept of sowing and reaping. Genesis 1 and 11 says this. Then God said, let the earth produce vegetation seed bearing plants and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit with seed here's the part that you need to underline in in it according to their kinds and guess the part i like and it was so so every time you sow anything that has a seed so it is in the natural the bible says so it is in the spirit so in the same way that a um uh, uh orange tree can only produce oranges and an apple tree can only produce apples is the same principle for us. Whatever you sow, that very thing is going to be reaped. I'll prove it to you one more time in the scriptures. There's two scriptures and we love to quote this when it says, those that sow in tears will reap in joy. And I want to be like, no, read a little further saints, because in Psalms 126, it's just six verses, but we're going to do the last two. In Psalms 126, five and six, the principle of sowing and them getting joy, it wasn't that tears is what they sowed. I want you to hear this. They did not sow tears. They sowed hope. I'll prove it to you in the scripture. Psalms 126, verse three, the Lord had done great things for us. We were joyful. Verse four, Restore our fortunes, Lord, like the water courses in the Negev. What is that? They knew what God had once done. And they're asking God now to do what he once did again for them. Again, he's at, they're asking God 
to do what he once did again for them. I'm going to pause for a minute because it looks like it's freezing on my end. And I want to make sure that you all hear this because this is important. Somebody let me know in the comments. I'm going to log in real quick on my phone because I want to make sure that I'm not losing you all because I am completely frozen. I am completely frozen. <laughs> but Pastor Chris, can you hear me though still? I can still hear you. Okay. Hear you. Well, I'm going to keep going and God be glorified. You all hear me and just look at my crazy face while I'm going because this word needs to get out. The devil is a liar. All right. So a couple of things that I want to make sure that you all hear, and I might switch it to another device if it doesn't clear up in a minute, but we're going to get this out tonight. One of the things in Psalms 126, five and six, again, they were sowing their faith. That's important. They were sowing their faith and they were sowing their hope. And then verse five says, those who sow in tears will reap with shouts of joy. Though one goes along weeping, Here's the part I want you to hear. They were carrying the bag of seed. Somebody put in the comments, they were carrying seed. Again, it's connected to what you sow. They were carrying the bag of seed. And it says, he will surely come back with shouts of joy, carrying his sheaves. So again, we see here them sowing in tears is because they remember what it used to be, but they were sowing something in the ground. They were sowing the hope and they were putting something in the ground saying, hey, if God did it before, he can do it again. That relates back to Romans 5 and 5. Y'all continue to pray in the Holy Ghost that this internet gets it together. They were praying and tying it to Romans 5 and 5. Romans 5 and 5 says that what? Hope maketh not a shame. Come on. Hope has an expectation. Hope has an end. So again, it's showing us that principle that whatever you sow, even if that's hope, even if that's joy, even if you have to do it while you're crying, you're going to reap something because you put hope in the ground. It's not your tears that you're putting in the ground. Stop letting them teach you that backward theology. It's not tears that you're putting in the ground. It's your ability to push past your tears and say, God, I believe even in the middle of this chaotic situation, what you're putting in the ground is a seed of hope. And hope, the Bible says in Romans 5 and 5, maketh not a shame. Again, your harvest is connected to what you sow. Pastor Chris, you jump in here for a moment. I'm going to try to make some adjustments on this end. I, I was, uh, as you were talking about uh, the, the whole idea of actual sowing, right? Um, and, and you brought out Galatians 6 real well. Here, here's, here's, here's the, the issue that takes place a lot of times in our, in our lives. And that is we, we have this, uh, ability, I'm going to call it an ability to be a certain way to a certain group of people, but then we turn around and we are a certain way to another type of group of people on a different, on a different level or in a, on a different day. Um, Either way you cut it or either way you look at it, you're you're two-faced. You're you're two-faced, you're 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 hypocritical. There's thing that, that that what you are doing, if you are not the same with uh group A as you are with group B, then you are a hypocrite and you are sowing uh contaminated seeds on on both sides. And and yet because you treat uh, group B uh, as, as uh, you know, all, all nice. And, you know, Bible talks about uh, the household of faith. You, you're real nice and you're real pleasant. You're real uh, uh, wonderful with those you go to church with, but yet the church down the street, you don't have two words for because they're not members of your church. Uh, you uh, are so two separate types of uh, behavior, two separate types of attitude. You are sowing, uh, you're sowing something in such a way that when it's time for you to reap, when you're, when it's time for you to reap the harvest, now you wonder why God isn't giving to you what you think you ought to get when in fact you have sown corruption in your own vineyard. 
You have sown corruption in such a way that you think that you're good. I, 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 you know, I love my church members. I love those. And 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 at the same time, you're sowing a uh, 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 kind of envy or a, uh, I want to say hatred, uh, uh, dissatisfaction towards other individuals that when it's time for you to reap and believe me, saints of God, we are going to reap everything that we sow. So when it's time to reap and we're getting all this stuff in and we're sitting back and it's like, but I've given my tithes. I've, I've given in offerings. I've, I've, I've served on the pastor's aid. I've, I've, I've ushered. I was a greeter. I, I, I've served on security. I've done all these things around. Why am I reap? Why is this happening to me? Because what you sowed overall has contaminated the good that you tried to sow. And if you're not recognizing the the, the weeds, the tear, if you want to put it that way, the, 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 the corrupt seed that you have sowed, if you're not recognizing that, when those things grow up together, God is now saying, here you go. You are now going to reap the thing that you sowed and I'm going to give to you I'm giving back to you the very thing that you put out. Don't blame me. I didn't tell you how to do it. You chose to sow the way you sowed. So why is it? Uh, the Bible tells us uh, about having uh, a, a good report, not only within, but without. We are supposed to have the type of attitude, the type of character, the type of wherewithal. We're supposed to carry ourselves in such a way, not just on Sunday morning, mornings when we go to church and 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 it's time uh and they, and they do the uh uh call, call to worship not just when it's time for us to go to church that we're supposed to put on our put our best foot forward but when we are on our job when we're at school when we're at the grocery store when we are in traffic when we're uh stuck in traffic and can't move we are to put our best foot forward every single moment of every single day because in those moments we are so sowing seeds. We're sowing the type of attitudes. We're sowing the type of mentality. We're sowing all these things. And when time for harvest comes, because again, saints of God, we are going to reap. We're going to reap. We're going to reap. Trust me, just as sure as peach tree runs through Buckhead, we are going to reap. And everything we have sown from sun up to sundown is going to come back and we're going to have we're going to have to have a little conversation with Jesus saying well what happened uh, and he will bring back to you, oh, yeah, uh, this right here, this right here, this right here. Oh, you went to church this day, but then when you left church, you was acting this way at the restaurant with the server. You were acting this way when you were waiting for your seat to be, uh, for, you, to, for you to all be seated. And because somebody got seated before you and you got there before them, now you had a stank attitude with your server and you treated them. All of this, we are going to reap. We're going to reap it. And, 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 and Pastor Yolanda, you said this and you said, and when you said, I was like, that's it. Because I, I, I agree 100%. Three quarters, of, 90% of the time, it ain't the enemy. It ain't the, the Bible says over in Matthew, uh, when the workers slept, the, the enemy of the farmer came and sold, uh, weeds, right? Uh, 90% of the time, it's not the enemy. It's not the enemy. Because here, here's the truth. Can, can I tell you, can I tell us the truth? Can I tell us the truth? The enemy knows if they just if he just gives us a little leeway, we'll mess it up ourselves. We'll we'll do something ourselves. Well, all he has to do is influence or or give a suggestion or, or drop an imagination. And because we aren't in the word like we're supposed to be and we're not casting down imaginations that come to exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ, we allow that, that imagination to germinate. We allow that imagination to germinate in our heart. And now it's coming up out of us and we are producing and planting seeds that not godly. And the enemy had nothing to do with it. All he did was gave an imagination, gave a thought, and we just took and ran with it. We're going to reap. We're going to reap. We have to be careful. We have to be, uh, uh, I like this word, we have to be cognizant of the seeds that we sow each 
and every day. I, I yeah, there, back at you, back at you. No, I love that, Pastor Chris. I love that, Pastor Chris. We have to be cognizant, and it all goes back to again, we want you to walk away with this. The first principle your harvest is connected to what you sow, it's connected to what you sow, and that a man soweth, so shall he reap. One of the things that, um, I want to also share with regards to harvest and Pastor Chris started to step right into it. Y'all, we be so connected in the spirit. Like we take separate notes. I just want y'all to know. So it's always funny how when we get in here, it'd be like, the Lord gave me that too. The second thing is your harvest is connected to your environment. Now I'm going to try to restrain myself because I probably could stay here for the rest of the night, but we're not. Your harvest is connected to your environment, okay? And Pastor Chris just talked about that. How do things germinate? For those of you that are planters, it's not just about having a good seed. It's about having good soil. So the second thing that you need to think about, if you're in a time of harvest, if the seed you have is good, the second question you should ask, is the soil right? And your soil can be composed of a lot of things. I was talking to someone at my job just last week. We were having an introduction call and we both were talking about how we love our vegetable gardens. And I really gotten into that in the last couple of years. And my parents have one and even my sister has one. And, you know, we've been talking about things that we're growing. And she was saying how she had the same seed for her vegetables, but her and her husband brought some store-bought store made compost from Home Depot and then they made some compost themselves at their home and she was saying that although the seed was the exact same the water was the same the sunlight every other condition was the same the only difference was the soil or that compost that the one that she composed with her and her husband versus the store bought one there was exponential growth and one of them because of the environment of the soil. And I want to tell you, your harvest in this season is predicated on the environment that you're in. Now, I'm about to upset some things. I'm probably going to upset myself. This is not the, hear me prophetically. This is not the hour to be someplace just to be someplace. This is not the hour to keep people around you just because you've known them all your life. I'm talking to myself. This is not the hour to get so comfortable and so familiar that you're not inspecting your environment. Where do we see that true in the Bible? Because let me tell you, you may have a harvest, but how much of a harvest you have is dependent on your environment. Don't believe me? Let's go to the Bible. Luke 8 and Matthew, Matthew the 13th chapter. When you go to those parables in the New Testament, Matthew 13 and Luke 8 both have the parable of the sower. So it's about what you sow, but what environment? The Bible talks about four different types of environment. <clears throat> it said that there was some seed. The seed was all good because the seed was the word of God. Some that fell on stony ground. Some that fell on good soil, but the thorns ate them up. You all that have been with us for Word on a Wednesday know we did a whole thing about this. So you can go back and watch that on YouTube. There was another one that said it fell on the ground and because it had no root, it was scorched up. But then there was some feed, seed that fell on good ground and it produced a harvest. But I want you to check this out, specifically in Matthew 13 and 8. Even though that seed fell on good ground, there were three different types of yields. Even Okay, I feel the Holy Ghost. There were three different types of yield even out of that good ground. The first yield was some 100 some 60 and some 30. Now, what is the difference between the 30, the 60 and the 100? How much nitrate was in the soil? How much depth that was in it? Let me tell you this. This is not the time to be a shallow Christian. You need something that's going to hold you and fertilize you. Why would you settle for a 30 year return when you could get an 100 fold return? It's because you didn't want to move the environment. You didn't want to change the ground a little bit. You had the opportunity in 2024, y'all. You got the opportunity to decide how much do you want? Do you want the little? Or do you want the much? Okay. So again, your environment is important. 
second thing I'll say about that, and then I want Pastor Chris to jump in here too. Let's go back to Galatians 6 and 9. Let's go back to, well, you know what? No, let's stay at Matthew 13. I won't go back. We'll stay at Matthew 13. And I want to read to you at Matthew 13, verses 25. And then we're going to go down to verses 29, because I want you to hear this word of the Lord. When he told this to me when we were preparing, I, I really want you to hear this. Matthew 13 and 25. But while people were sleeping, this is the Christian standard version. While people were sleeping, his enemy, did it say God's enemy? No. The one that planted, his enemy came sowed weeds among the wheat and left some versions say slipped out but when the plant sprouted and produced a, a grain then the weeds also appear let me pause here parenthetically so i can say this to you there are some things that are going to come that are not prof profitable for you just because you're producing don't let that scare you i'm going to say it again there are some things that are going to show up that are hard, that are ungodly. That's what weeds are and a tear are. There are things that are going to come along, not because you're doing something wrong. It's because you're actually productive and doing something right. And if in this season you are scared and scared off or run away because opposition comes, the moment that you start doing something right, you've missed it. The Bible shows us here that the, when the plant sprouted and produced grain, that's when the weeds appear. There are some things that are coming to agitate and irritate you that they're showing up because you're doing the right things. Man, let that be a sign to you to keep going. But here's the thing. The landowner said in verse 27, Master, I thought you sold some good seeds. That's like some of my friends. I thought you out here living for Jesus. So, so why is all of this happening? And they asked the master and the master knew. Here's the part that I love about God. God said, oh no, the enemy did this. Never was confused about who planted that. It was like, no, the enemy did it. But here's the wisdom because Yolanda would be like, well, if the enemy did it, let's ride and get the enemy. Get that up out of here. But the Lord said to them, no, I don't want you to pull it up. I want you to hear me in the Holy Ghost. You might know that might know that they're an enemy you may know that they mean no good for you the goal in 2024 and what your harvest is connected to you keeping your hands off of them i know they're lying i know they're cheating i know that they're uh, not doing the right things on your job but you need to take your hands off of it this is not the time for you to try to go out on a campaign to say i'm here to pluck up the tear that is not the season that we're in. You need to read what the Bible said. It said, let it grow up together. And they were looking confused. He said, because if you try to pull the weeds up right now, you might also uproot the wheat. Is there a situation that maybe you're dealing with in some environment and maybe it's going awry because you think that I'm going to handle this one person that's wrong. And the Lord is like, take your hand off of that because you're trying to deal in your own strength with what's wrong. You're going to tear up something that actually is right. We are not the best at harvesting things for ourselves. Let the Lord do the harvesting for you. The way that the Lord said it to me was this. Stop being distracted about what's growing alongside you. Because God is going to do the separating. I want you to hear me. Stop being distracted that they're going. Yes, they got a promotion like you got a promotion. Yes, they got a raise like you got a raise. Stop being distracted by what's growing up beside you. Because a day is coming according to the scripture. And I ain't talking about in the sweet by and by. Harvest time is here. And when the harvesters come, there's a surefire place for those that are perpetrating to be something that they're not. I told this to them during the, the prep. The Lord told me in 2024, the gig is up. Everything that is a counterfeit, it's going to be exposed. And you don't have to help God expose the counterfeits. You don't need to help God expose the counterfeits. Stay in the glory long enough. Stay in the fire long enough. 
stay in the process long enough. Every counterfeit is going to be revealed. You know how counterfeits are exposed? It's by intense heat and pressure. And you think that God is turning up. I hear this in the Holy Ghost. You think that, yes, Lord, I. you think the pressure is turning up because God's trying to kill you and destroy you. No, he's turning up the heat because everything that's not a pure metal can't stay in the fire. It's going to burn away. And the heat that is coming, the heat that is on this year, the glory of God that is coming is to expose the counterfeit and to expose the lie. Stay in the fire. If you're the real thing, guess what? The heat does to gold something it doesn't do to nickel, something that it doesn't do to brass. The heat turns up the value of a diamond. The heat turns up the value of gold. The heat turns up the value of silver. But everything that is false burns away. And let me tell you, the heat that is coming is related to your harvest. Now, I'm giving you this because they're not going to tell you this maybe at church. They're not going to tell you that God is turning up the heat in the earth. Hallelujah. Not just naturally, but in your circumstances. It's getting harder and the heat is coming, not because God wants to destroy you. He is refining you in his fire. He's purifying you because when you come out, when you come out, not if, when you come out, you're coming out as pure gold. And somebody said, well, what happens to the other things that went in? Let me tell you, come with Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They said they went into the fire and there was a fourth man that appeared with them in the fire. And he looked like what? The son of God. They came out of the fire, but the same people that turned up the heat in the fire, guess what happened to them? They, they died. Period. They died. What is the enemy to me? When I've got God, come on. What is an enemy to me? What is a hater to me? I'm, I'm, I'm done with it in 2024. They don't exist to me. Turn up. Some of y'all need to change your prayer time and, and say, turn up the heat, God. T turn it up. I, I double dog dare you in the spirit to pray. I know you don't want to do it because it's been so hard, but I double dog. God, I'm, I'm the real McCoy. I'm not a counterfeit. Turn the temperature up. It's getting hot in here. Come on. It's getting hot in here. Turn the temperature up, God, because I'm the real deal. They might pass away. They might fade away, but I can handle this fight. Come on. I can handle this pressure. I'm going up in my back. Woo! I'm increasing my weight. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you've been praying that the fire will leave you. But the Lord said, no, I'm increasing your value. I'm increasing your weight. I'm increasing your stature. I want you not to be distracted because, again, your harvest is connected to your environment. Pastor Chris, jump on in there real quick. For a copy of today's tape, I mean, for a copy of today's tape. Listen, as you were talking, uh, uh, bringing out Matthew 13 again, and you were talking about how the conversation with the workers and the owner, right? The farmer that owned the, and he told them, he said, hey, this is the enemy that did this, right? And, and any good worker, in, hear me, any good worker, any worker worth his salt wants to try to fix the problem for their employer. They want to they 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 want to try to get in there and let's let's make this right then, sir. Let's let's can should, should we go in there and get it and and look what the farmer says. He says no, because if you go in there, you'll end up pulling up the wheat along with the 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 weeds. Right? Why did he say that? I wrote this down when you when you brought that out. It's because the worker and the harvester are two different people. The worker. And the harvester are two different people. They're two different people. They're, they're, they hold two different offices. Just because you see the problem and, and, and you identify the problem does not mean that God has gifted or anointed you to be able to handle the problem or to, uh, uh, to address the problem. You see it, uh, you see it, you recognize it, and in your heart, believe me, in your heart of hearts, in your heart of hearts as a worker for God, because the farmer is representing of God because the, the, the worker whose heart is for God wants to make it happen for God. I want to work. I want to do this because why? Because I am a worker. I'm a worker and I need to work. You want me to go in there and pull it up? And God says, no, I have harvesters 
for that job. Your job was to plant. Your job was to prepare. Your job was to identify issues and bring them to me. And, and I'll send the harvester to go in because here's the thing. The harvester, although they're all believers, right? We're all believers, but we all hold different offices. We all hold different offices. Uh, the hand cannot tell the foot, I have no need of you. Uh, the head can't tell uh, uh, the elbow, I have no need of you. We all are vital in our roles. We're all vital in our roles. And he says, no, you can't go in there and do it because when the when but when the harvesters come, I'm going to have them do it. They they know how to recognize and get all the weeds, bundle them up, and throw them in the fire, and then they know what to do with the wheat and bring them in uh, to, to to for the harvesting. Right. Uh, so so we have to understand. Yes, we have great intentions on doing all the things that God uh, uh, wants us to do, but here's what we have to understand. There are roles that each and every one of us play in the kingdom. And we cannot get, we, well, they, they say it this way, uh, you, uh, you, you got your own lane, right? But, but, but to be honest, you have your own role. You have your own role. Your role is the role that God has called you for. And you, although you see a, a thing that is happening, your role is not for you to address it. Allow God to bring the proper person, the proper uh, entity, the one that he has designed for that role. Let them handle it. You brought it out. You you saw it. And God says, okay, just, just, just look, just, just pray, just pray. And I'm going to send the harvesters and they're going to come and they're the ones that are going to handle it and pull it out and do what they need to do. Because the worker and the harvester, I'm glad God gave me that. The worker and the harvester are two different people. They are two different roles, right? We, 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 we can't be, uh, uh, we can't do it all. We can't do it all. Don't take what Paul says, I become all things to all people that I may win some to mean that I can do it all. That's not what Paul was talking about. Paul was saying, I've, I've, I've been in situations where I can identify with individuals on their level where they are. I'm not saying I can do everything. And he said that I might win some, but Paul meant was I ain't gonna win everybody. Understand our role. What is our role in the kingdom when it comes to the harvest? Are we just the workers? Are we the ones that are uh, 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 preparing? We're talking about the environment now, right? Uh, uh, are we the ones to go in and see those uh, that that one weed that uh, that what, what Pastor Yolanda said that that was just laying there waiting? Are we the ones to identify that weed and pull it out before the seed is planted? Before before we start putting in the soil what is needed, are we the ones to go and, and churn up the ground and get it soft and, and pulling out all the stones and the pebbles that 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 will tend to uh, begin to choke out or cause to uh, that that seed once it starts to germinate to cause it to, to malfunction, if you will, to cause it from not allowing it to pull the proper nutrients. Are we that individual to go in and get the stumps that or the roots that were left from the trees that were cut down to go and yank those out and pull those out? Is that our job? Is that our job to do that when we go in to prepare the environment for the seed? Is, is that our role? And it, because if that if that's our role, then that should be our, that's what we should be focused on, right? Because what you, uh, uh, Pastor Yolanda said this way, she said, because just when you put the seed in and it starts to grow, those there, and I, I was in landscaping, so I know how weeds act. Weeds will actually just lay there until something else starts to grow. And then it will attach itself as close as it can to not only feed off what you're feeding that thing to grow, the plant that you're causing to grow, that vegetation you're calling to grow, you're causing that weed to grow as well. And you have to wait 
until that vegetation is at full strength before you pull it out and you're going to pull it out and you're going to see that there's weeds attached to it. And that's when you have to be able to, uh, 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 what's the word, cassir, uh, 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 cassir, where you have to do the cutting away at the harvest time, that you're cutting away the parts of the harvest, cutting away the part of the vegetation that is of no good in order for us to get what we need uh, to sustain ourselves naturally, the same as in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, men and women, loves uh, 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 the lovers of God, we have to understand our role. We gotta understand our role when we are dealing with the environment that God is using for the harvest that is to come. Listen, y'all, I'm so stirred. Like, I'm over here stirred. I'm going to keep pressing for it, but I'm, I'm telling you, I can stop right now. We got two more things that we want you to know. So, and I want to make sure that we got a good Bible study class on tonight. So we said, first, your harvest is connected to what you sow. Second, your harvest is connected to your environment. And I love what Pastor Chris said. That's such a revelation. The worker and the harvester are not the same role. Ask God what your role is. It's connected to your environment and don't be distracted by what's going beside you. I thought I was going to pass out when Pastor just said that weeds love to lay there and do nothing. And then they wait to get as close as possible to what's actually producing. Y'all, I will come back to that on next week because when we do the wheat versus the weeds. The third thing is your harvest is connected to the right time. Now, I'm going to pray that I don't pull a whole conniption. Your harvest is not just connected to what you sow in your environment. Your harvest is connected to the right time. The Bible says it this way, seed time and harvest. The time of sowing is not the same as the time of reaping. Now, again, we know from Amos that a time was coming where it says in Amos that the plowman in Amos 7 would overtake the reaper. And that was usual because there is a time period or a gap between when you sold something and when you re and when you reaped it. The, again, we talked about that principle in Genesis 1 and 11. But I want to go back to Galatians 9 because the Lord showed me something in preparing for tonight that I think is going to be so great. Galatians 6 and verse 9. Excuse me, you all. Galatians 6 and verse 9. Your harvest is connected to the right time. I'm trying to just ramp myself down and about to be ramped back up again all right here's what it says in galatians 6 verse 9 let us not get tired of doing good for we will reap at the proper time if we don't give up i want to read that again because this is a conditional statement and i want you to Really here, this is why you got to read the text properly. It's conditional statement. Galatians 6 and verse 9. Because if you're going to get a harvest, your harvest is contingent on the right time, but something that you have to do in that right time. And I want to pull this out. I'll read it one more time. Let us not get tired of doing good, for we will reap, that's a promise, at the proper time. If, that's the condition, if, we don't give up. So what are we seeing there in Galatians 6 and 9? Your harvest is connected to the right time. How do you get to the right time? There are two words when I was studying this that really stood out to me. Is the word in due season. When I looked up the word that they use there for in due season, it means there's an opportune time. So what does that mean? You could be trying to harvest something, and if it's not at the right time or an inopportune time, you could destroy the potential of the harvest that you have. I want y'all to hear me, because part of what you need in 2024 is you need discernment between what is good and what is God. I wish I could shout this from the rooftops. It may be a good opportunity, but it may not be the God thing. And you do not want to squander your harvest, hear me in the spirit in this season, running after what is seemingly good 
based on natural wisdom or your own thoughts only to miss the door that God is going to set before you if you wait for the opportune time. There's an opportune time to have conversations that are difficult. There's an opportune time to go and ask for favor. There's an opportune time. Why do you think even after, I want to give you a Bible. If you go and read in the book of Esther, we all get excited and we love to go on three-day fast because Esther fasted for three days and got favor for the king. Oh, no, 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 no. Read your Bible slowly. Esther fasted for three days to get wisdom about approaching the king without being summoned. But even when she approached him, she didn't immediately start venting about what Haman was doing. The Bible said for a series of days, she invited both ha she invited both Haman and the king to come and dine with her. Now, I want to tell you, she waited until the opportune time where the king said, wait a minute, you've been holding out on me a little bit too long. What is it that you want to tell? She didn't have to go and tell it. The king requested it from her, okay? Because when she fasted and prayed, I really believe in my spirit. The Lord told her, when you go to approach, you invite that, that joker to a meal because that's going to soften him up over a few days. Let me tell you, there is an opportune time. There is a season. Ecclesiastes says it this way. There is a time and a season for everything under heaven. Okay. And so just because it's a lawful for you to do it, come on, Paul, it may not be expedient for you to do it. What does that word expedience mean? When is it opportune for you to do it? And so you want to make sure that you don't corrupt your harvest by moving in an inopportune time. That means moving from that church in an inopportune time. It means moving from that job at an inopportune time. You want to make sure that you are cadenced with the rhythm of heaven. That's one thing. The other part is it's conditional. Not just on the opportune time, but it's conditional on you not fainting. Now, I want to give you something about that, because when we hear faint, we like to go back to Isaiah and say they shall mount up with, with on wings as an eagle. You know, it, and you think about someone not fainting about being strong. But when you look at the literal translation of faint not in Galatians six and nine, the literal translation of that word means. Don't be relaxed. Woo, woo, woo. I'm here to tell somebody your harvest is contingent on you not being relaxed. Now, I know this is a hard word for some of us. The Bible says when we look at the parable of the wheat and the weeds in Matthew 13 and 25, it says that while the people were sleeping and some of us, our harvest is being compromised because we sleep on the job. Let me tell you, I work in healthcare, and every environment that I worked at, you can automatically be fired from your job if they catch you sleeping on the job. And some of us are not going to walk into harvest or we're compromising our harvest. I hear the Holy Ghost because we have fainted. We have gotten restless. We have gotten tired and we're asleep on the job. What does that look like, Yolanda? I, I really don't know. You've gotten relaxed in Zion. The Bible says that they've gotten at ease in Zion. And that's when their enemies came and destroyed them. What? Does relax look like? What does it look like when you're fainting? You used to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. I'm talking to myself and spend an hour with the Lord. And now you don't do it. You used to get on your knees before you got in the bed and pray to the Lord. And now you're so lazy. All you do is lay there in the bed and you can't even acknowledge the creator by getting on your knees and they function. What does it look like when you're getting relaxed? You listen to more things and more gossip on YouTube and through TikTok and your Facebook feed than you do in the time of the word. You've gotten relaxed. And let me tell you, I I dare to say to you, if the workers in Matthew 13 had not fallen asleep and made a cadence that while one slept, another was going to be up, the enemy would not have snuck into the field and planted some bad sores. Could it be that the tears that are presenting itself in your life is because you fell asleep at the wheel? Could it be that what you're experiencing as an agitation is because you got too relaxed with your enemy? Could it be that you are experiencing what you're experiencing because you have fainted? But I'm here to tell you wake up sleeper wake up sleeper wake up sleeper we are not going to compromise our harvest we're going to be alert we're going to be ready could it be that you're relaxed i want to give some more examples because some of y'all are like oh no i do all that deep stuff could it be that you're relaxed 
because you don't fast like you used to. You you used to say, you know what? I ain't going to drink no alcohol. And now you've gotten so comfortable. Every time we turn around, you're using alcohol to help you go to sleep. I'm coming for you because I hear in the spirit. You're using alcohol and sedatives to go to sleep. You've gotten relaxed in Zion. Could it be that that zeal you once had, you don't have it anymore? But we're not going to compromise our harvest. We're not going to compromise our harvest. Our harvest is about the right time. And how do you know when it's the right time? The Bible says that there were 10 versions, five being foolish and the other five being wise. And guess what? The five that were wise, they knew when the right time was because they weren't asleep. They had oil in their lamps. They were prepared and they were ready. Part of the opportune time and your harvest being tied to the opportune time is making sure that you stay ready. Somebody put in the comments, I'm going to stay ready. I'm going to stay ready. I'm going to stay ready. I'm going to get what God has for me because I'm going to stay ready. I say get ready. I'm going to stay ready. Before the enemy comes, I've already loaded up my ammo and prayer. Before my children start acting up at school, I've already peeked that in the realm of the spirit. I'm going to stay ready. Pastor Chris has a, a course. It's called One Shot, and it's about making sure that you have your weaponry. I really think he's preparing for the war of the century sometimes. But one of the things that I like is that the people that take his course, when it's time to use their weapon, they're they don't have to worry about if they're going to handle it appropriately because they've already been trained. They've been prepared. Some of us need to re-engage in our training. Some of us need to re-engage in our training. You don't have to get ready if you stay ready. My mom used to tell me about how I look. Yolanda, if you stay ready. You ain't got to worry about getting ready. It's the same thing in the spirit. I'm going to stay ready if I'm expecting a harvest. I, I want to move on because I know we've got a little bit more time. So the harvest is connected to what you sow. It's connected to your environment. It's connected to the right time and you being prepared and not fainting, not being caught off guard at the right time. But last but not least, and after I do this, I want Pastor Chris to come in and then we're going to close out. Your harvest is connected to the quality of the reapers. Now, y'all, I want you to hear me. Pastor Chris did not see this in the notes. So when he went into the workers and the reapers are not the same people, I wanted to fly away like Patty LaBelle. Your harvest is connected to the quality of your reapers. I want to give you something culturally. Because when we read the Bible, I don't want you to think about it in a Western context. I want you to think about it in a Middle Eastern context around Palestine, Syria, those areas, okay? Whenever there was a harvest, the reapers were a group of young men, I want you to hear me, that were called at an appointed time to help the owner of the field gather together what was produced. Now, I want you to come a little closer to the screen because this is going to be a little hard. The last thing you need for your harvest is to circumspectly evaluate who are my friends that I have around me and are they able to help me bundle and carry what's about to come to me. I know you've known her since 1992. I know that's your blood cousin. I know that's your BFF. But if you don't ask yourself the questions for my harvest, are the people around me skilled to carry what I'm about to have come to me? You might forfeit some of your harvest. I'm going to tell you why this was so, 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 so important. The people that were the reapers were so important that Jesus described them in Matthew 9 by saying this. He said, not to pray for the harvest, but pray for the laborers. Okay, when is the last time? I want y'all to hear where I'm going. When is the last time you said, God, reveal to me who's around me that are really not laboring with me? There's something different to those that are laboring with you. And not only are they laboring with you, is the skill set 
of those that are laboring with me for the type of harvest. What it takes to reap things from an apple tree is not the same skill set that's needed to reap corn. It's not the same skill set and the tools that are needed to reap wheat. You need to ask God for what your harvest is. Do I have skilled people surrounding me that know how to intake it? I want to give you some more. When they would bring it in, not only would they bring in the harvest, culturally during that time, the job of the reapers were to gather everything together in sheaves. That was the tear and the wheat. But when they bundled it together, they would work a process with the owner of the field to categorize the harvest into three things that we'll go into next week, which is grain, straw, and the chaff. So here's my last question. Are your people in your corner skilled that they can help you gather, but also help you separate? I, I want to tell you something. The separation process of that harvest was appropriate because the value of grain and the value of straw and the value of chaff were not the same. And those reapers, even though they bundled everything together, they had to know how to separate it. Do you have people in your corner that are able to cheer you on, but they're also able to tell you your behavior is trash? Do you have people in your corner that are able to tell you, you know what, you did really good on that sermon, but you roll your eyes at people too much. Do you have people that can help you gather, but also help you separate your soul from your spirit? Do you have people that are going to check your flesh? And if you don't, your harvest might be compromised. Your harvest is not just connected to what you do, not just connected to what you sow. It's not just connected to your environment. It's not just connected to your time, but it's also connected to making sure that you got quality reapers. That's people around you that are able to help you gather and separate. I'm going to stop there, Pastor Chris. I'm going to let you jump in uh, and, and say whatever the Lord is giving. Oh my God. This... This, this I'm 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 just the quality of the worker, right? Because here, here you said it, you said it. The, the owner hires qualified uh individuals that that's all they did when harvest time was. That's all they did. They didn't, they didn't work at the 7-Eleven or they didn't work at, you know what I'm saying? That's all they did. They went around uh, uh, harvesting crops for owners of properties. That's all they did. And that that's all they knew to do, right? Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a matter of why, uh, now, case in point for that is the, the owner of the property, the owner of the field, had plenty of friends. He had plenty of uh, family, right? He had plenty of people that he could have called up, sent a letter. Hey, harvest time's coming. Won't y'all come help me out? He had plenty of people he could have called, but he knew the, the, the significance of getting a quality harvest every year. He could get his kids and get his family in there, but, but when you want to reap on 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 you want to reap the 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 complete benefit of a harvest you want people that know like you said know how to gather it all up without damaging it up uh, know how to put it all together knowing how to categorize it so when it's time to take it into uh to the threshing floor and to the separate to, to when it's time to separate it notice what you were saying they don't just pull it together and wrap it up. They also separate it. The owner basically just says, here, I'm hiring you because I know you are qualified to do this job. Come in and take care of this for me and whatever's right, I'm going to pay you. And so they come in, they gather it, they separate it, they put the chaff over here, they put the uh, the straw over here, and they put the wheat uh, put the wheat and uh, on in the winnowing place uh, and the threshing floor, and it's all separated. And the owner not only has a proper harvest, 
but he he benefits and he he uh he gets a surplus he's he's made money uh even though he's paid those people he's made a profit because he's hired the right people how many times have we seen on our jobs how many times have we seen on our jobs where our employers will hire individuals just because they say they know what they're doing, just because they say, well, you know, I took this class, just because they say, well, you know, I just graduated, but they have no experience. They have no uh, earthly idea on how it oper how the thing operates. And what they do is they hire them and they come in and they do so much damage to the processes that were already in place that they either put them on probation or they just say, well, you know, it's not gonna work out. We got to let you go. And now they have to start the whole hiring process all over again because they have not pulled in the proper experienced individuals to help the owner of the company make a profit. What God is looking from us, he's coming to look to see if we are bearing fruit. And if we're bearing the fruit, then God's like, okay, I'm going to prune you here. I'm going to prune you here because I want you to bear much fruit. When we do not bear fruit, when we when God sends in the reapers to pull from us and we're not uh, 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 reaping or harvesting the things that God wanted to plant in us, there is a problem. And the only way it finds out that the problem is because he sends in qualified reapers. That's why God, that's why it's very important to be connected to individuals that can look you in your face in all your Sunday finery and say something's off with your spirit. Something's wrong. Something's going on. Everything is not, you look good on the outside, but something's going on on the inside. And it's individuals that God has spent time with God, that has spent time with you and understand understanding how it, it how, what's going on with you so they can get the best out of you so God can use it greatly. That's who is in your corner and who do you have helping you reap what it is God is trying to pull out of you. Y'all, I am so <clears throat> stirred. I'm going to share this because Pastor Kristen stirred me back up again and I, I'm not going to hold you all <laughs> too much longer because I could just run there's so much more that we want to because we could talk about <clears throat> the reason why the, the the reapers are important but i'll save that for next week <clears throat> but i'm going to tell you this it is important to have people around you in this season that are not going to let you bury what god gave you and not make it produce i want you to hear me with this we talked about this last night when we were prepping. The Lord, not Yolanda, not Pastor Chris, not Pastor Tavia. The Lord called the person who took their talent and buried it and did not reproduce, called them wicked and evil. Okay. And I want y'all to check something. And I, I shared this with them last night that the Lord gave me. We keep talking about the wealth of the wicked is laid up in storage for the righteous. And every time we say that, we start to think about the drug dealer. We start to think about the person who's flim flamming, as my grandma would say on Wall Street. But who did God call wicked? The person who did nothing with what was entrusted to them. And I'm telling you, you we're about to enter a great transfer. Okay. And the wealth of the wicked is about to be given to the righteous. So those of us that have platforms and have not stewarded them well, those of us that have talents and gifts, and because we compared, I'm talking to my, because we compared our one little thing and said, well, it's not the two, it's not the five, and we are not doing anything with the one. God is about to give it to somebody else who wants to do something with it. The Bible says the wealth of the wicked. Who did he call wicked? He not just those that are heathen that don't profess the name of the Lord. It is a wickedness to God for him to put something on the inside of you and expect a harvest.
you do nothing with it. And I would hate for in 2024, we talking about an open door. In 2024, I would hate to say congratulations to somebody else because they're getting what God actually had for you because you didn't do anything with it. Wouldn't it be a sad day that I have to give you a condolence and give somebody else a congratulation that they took your seat because you refused to occupy it? When I tell you we are in harvest time. But I want to make sure that you get a good sober work. God expects something to produce through us, not just for us to have something given to us. Something has to come out. Woo, I hear that. Something out of all of you that are on here watching it live on the replay. There's a demand I feel right now in the Holy Ghost. God says, I want something out of you. I want something out of you. And it's not just get something out that's bad. I want something that you've been telling me no to. I want something that you've been slow to do. I want that procrastination out of you. And I want that book that I asked out of you. I want that slothfulness out of you. And I want that prayer line that I told you. I want the and some of us have been looking for things outside of us to give us what we need. And God said, you're unfulfilled because it's supposed to come through you. It's supposed to come through you. You're discontented because you're wanting somebody else to create a harvest for you so that you can walk into it. And God said, no, that never was your field. I gave you your own. Woo! I gave you your own. That never was your field. You're worried about whether or not you're going to be a worker or a reaper someplace else. And God said, I gave you your own field. You've got to do whatever God told you to do. Time is of the essence. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. Time is of the essence. It's time. It's time. Not only is the gig up for the counterfeit, the gig is up for you playing small. The gig is up for you acting like you don't know who you are in the Lord. It is up. I'm sorry. You are not just Sally Sue that types on the keyboard. No, you are a prophet to the nation. You are someone that can go lay hands on everybody in the hospital and you'll probably have them raised up. Stop playing small when God called you to be big. This is not the season. This is not the hour. I see somebody put in, in, the, in the comments. I said, you better wave your white flag in the spirit. That's absolutely right. The time is up. Time is of the essence. I know they've been saying it for a long time and some of us have gotten real comfortable, but I'm here to echo what Peter said in second Peter. Don't think just because God has not come, he's not coming. He is surely coming. Y'all, I'm going to say this to you. And I'm going to leave it alone because I feel this in the Holy Ghost. Do you know the Bible says that a day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. Y'all, when did Jesus, when did the Lord <clears throat> take his rest? On the seventh day. Do you know we've almost been in 6,000 years on the planet Earth? We're entering into the sixth day and we're getting very close to the seventh. I promise you, it could be our generation that sees the return of the Lord. And you teetering and tottering over your flesh is not an you can't get to heaven and well lord you know my heart and i had good intentions let me tell you is your ministry your children yes is your ministry your grandchildren yes but there's something external to your family that god has called you to do stop playing small unmedicate yourself i hear this in the holy ghost the word i keep hearing is I'm removing the epidurals. Woo, woo. I'm removing the epidurals. This one, you're going to feel it. I know you want something to coax you to sleep. I know you don't want to feel what all comes with the birthing process of this one, but there's no epidurals right now in the spirit. You're going to feel this one. You're going to feel every pain. You're going to feel your body stretch. You're going to feel every single thing that comes with birthing this out. But guess what? When you're done birthing it, because when you hold it in your hand, you ain't going to think about the pain but there's not an epidural help is not coming this time not from the places that you want it there's not a sedative for this mm -mm. no mm -mm. there's not an epidural you're gonna feel all of it is it painful yes is it aggravating yes but you're gonna feel it but on the other side of it there's going to be glory hallelujah on the other side of it there's going to be glory your harvest because i feel it's about to shift i feel i feel a shifting your harvest is connected to what you sow it's connected to your environment it's connected to the opportune time 
and it's connected to who's connected to you. Go through it, people. I feel this in the Holy Ghost. I'm trying not to weep. I know it's been hard. I know you've been laboring. I've never had natural children, you all. So I'm telling you what I've heard other people say. And But those of you that have had children, I know you've been in labor for 15, 16, 17 hours. I know you've been trying to push this ministry for 15, 16, 17 years. But the Lord said, are you going to give up in the middle of labor? Are you going to give up in the middle of labor? I can see the crowning of the baby. Are you going to give up now? You're this close. Are you going to give up now? It's crowning. Are you going to stop pushing now? Come on. Are, are you going to get to part of labor and almost be able to hold it in your hand and walk away now? The Bible says it like this in Isaiah. Shall I bring you to the point of delivery? And you not bring for, ah, yes, Lord, Jesus. the midwives are coming. I know you've been doing it by yourself. And I know it's been hard. But God is sending skilled help. Ah, yes, Lord Jesus. He is sending skilled help. You're not going to have to do it by yourself. He's going to send a midwife that can coach you. You've been having a doula. I feel that for with your friends. A doula in the natural is someone who just makes the mother comfortable. You know, she just kind of rubs your feet. You know, just tries to make sure that your hair is out of your face. It's for comfort. Some of your circle have been doulas, but God said, I'm removing those because you need a midwife. You need somebody that's going to be able to take their hand and reach up in there with you and force you to pull this thing right on out. No more doulas. God is sending you a midwife. I appreciate them making you feel comfortable. I appreciate them making you feel good, but there's somebody coming that God's going to send that is skilled to help you get that baby out. Y'all, I'm going to stop there because I feel myself getting stirred up in the spirit. Let's pray. Uh, uh, we're going to do that. I want to pray. And then we're going to go there. Father God, we thank you right now, Lord, for what you're doing. We thank you, oh God, for this new series that we're starting. We thank you, God, that we're in harvest time. Father, I pray for those that are watching this live and even on the replay that you would give them a, a divine revelation and expand what we've talked about on tonight with regards to their harvest. Father, first I pray every place that they've been coaxed to sleep because they're tired and they're trying to find rest from the circumstances that are around them. Father, awaken them unto you. Father, I ask that you would help them come alive to you, oh God. Help them to be alert, prepared, and ready. And Father, every place they said, hey, this work is too hard and it's too much. Father, help them to remember the joy that they had when they started and they put the seed in the ground. Father, I ask that you would open our eyes to seeds that we have sown that were good, that we've forgotten about, that you plan to harvest, oh God. And for everything that we've sown that's not not been like you. Father, give us the courage to repent. We repent to you on tonight, but God, give us the courage to make it right with those in a horizontal space, brother to brother and sister to sister. In the name of Jesus, God, purify our environments in the same way that a baby, woo, in the same way that a baby is only born in a clean environment so that it has a long life. God, purify our environments, oh God, so that what we're giving birth to, our harvest is in an atmosphere, oh God, that's conducive for it to grow and replenish. Father, I thank you that you're opening our eyes to divine opportunities and divine moments, oh God, that we move in discernment and in strength, oh Father, that we understand, oh God, that if we persevere and hold out that we will reap because that's a promise of you and you are not a man that you should lie neither the son of man that you should repent and father we thank you last but not least father i thank you that skilled reapers skilled midwives skilled teachers skilled mentors skilled leaders are coming to your people oh god that would help them not just to gather and prepare themselves for the harvest those that will come to shoulder the weight and those that have the courage and and the clarity to help them walk in a way that they can help them separate and to dismantle and to 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 make sure that they take out the things that are not beneficial to them in this season i believe believe that you're going to do it. I believe that you're going to show up strong on their behalf. And we give you thanks for this. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. If you believe 
that you are in harvest time. I want you to drop that in the comments. I'm in harvest time. I believe that God wants to do something great. We are so excited, y'all, to be back. I'm sure you can feel the excitement. I can feel it from you, Pastor Chris. I can feel it from the folks in the comments. Thank you for joining us. If you have already shared this with a friend, share it via Facebook or YouTube. Get the word of God out. It is not about myself. It's not about Pastor Chris or Pastor Tavia. It is about getting people back to the word of God. Take the time this week to study more about harvest. Next week, we're talking about wheat versus weeds. We're going to be back here, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. Same time, same place. We are in harvest time. Pastor Chris, are you excited? We are in beyond, harvest time. Beyond, beyond. <laughs> we are in and, harvest time. And, and, and listen, I'm, I, I can't wait <laughs> for Pastor Tavia to get back. Because, you know, even with our moment with her yesterday, it was just, it, it was too much. It was too much. She might be virtually laying hands on the people. L it like, was too I, much. I, I, but, but I like, I, she need to do what she did more. Because uh, <laughs> what she gave mm -hmm. us yesterday was. <laughs> y'all buckle y'all seatbelts next week to pass the table code because she might come and Ooh. just speak in tongues. Of I mean, coming in like a and, spiritual and wrecking ball, a spiritual wrecking ball. That's what she coming. Ex exactly. With. Exactly. Exactly. Well, we love you all. We're in harvest time. We'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Good but night.